Hello everyone, Matthew Mortazavi here with one example from the Maxwell relations. So in this example, we are going to verify the validity of this Maxwell relation for steam at 350 degrees C and at 2 megapascal pressure. So uh, we had four Maxwell relations, we discussed about that in previous uh, videos, and this is one of those relations. So in questions like this, what we want to do, we want to analyze uh, either side of the, side of the uh, equation for a certain condition. For instance, the left-hand side should be evaluated for steam when the temperature is kept constant. This subscript means the temperature should be constant and uh, the value is given at 350 degrees C. So we are evaluating the left-hand side at a constant temperature, which is 350 degrees C. We are evaluating the right-hand side at a constant pressure, which is 2 megapascal. At, and at the end of the uh, analysis, we compare them uh, to each other. So let's do the left-hand side first. So the left-hand side says partial S, partial P, when the temperature is constant. So basically, what we want to obtain from the table is the change in entropy with respect to the pressure when the temperature is kept constant at 350 degrees C. So if I go to the corresponding table, which is basically the superheated vapor table, these two, uh, these two uh, properties give the phase of superheated vapor. If I go to the superheated vapor table, which is right here, what I want to do, I want to keep the temperature constant at 350 degrees C and look at the change of entropy if the pressure is changed, okay? So the initial pressure was 2 megapascal, all right? So this is the superheated vapor table for water. So if we can read this, it says uh, superheated vapor. The table that I'm using is A6 and the page number is 909. So you already have these tables. So the reference pressure is 2 megapascal, all right? Let me make sure that you can see this. So the reference pressure is 2 megapascal. That means I want to change the temperature, I'm sorry, I want to change the pressure to go below 2 megapascal, which is right here, 1.8 megapascal, and also go after 2 megapascal or beyond 2 megapascal, which is 2.5 megapascal here. So in one step, I'm keeping uh, the temperature constant, which is 350 degrees C. So you see, this is 350 degrees C. I keep the temperature constant and look at the change of entropy at two different pressures, one less than 2 megapascal and one greater than 2 megapascal. So, Basically here, by saying this equation, I simply mean I'm going to keep the temperature at 350 degrees C, but I will change the pressure. So the pressure will be changed. So the two pressures that I have is pressure of 2.5 megapascal, which I could directly put 2.5 megapascal, minus the pressure of 1.8 megapascal. So these are my two pressure values. Okay, and in the nominator, I should look at the entropy for this condition. So basically, this is S at 2.5 megapascal, all right, S at 2.5 megapascal minus S at 1.8 megapascal. Okay, and all of them, all these four properties are evaluated at temperature equal to 350 degrees C. Okay, so this is evaluated at 350 degrees C. This is also evaluated at 350 degrees C. For these two, uh, they don't really depend on the pressure. So this stays 2.5 megapascal and 1.8 megapascal. So this is one step that we need to do. So if I go to the table and if I read the entropy for 2.5 megapascal, so let's say this is the table. This is 2.5 megapascal, and my temperature is 350. So this is the entropy that I want to read for that condition. So once again, a pressure of 2.5 megapascal, temperature of 350, and S is 6.8424. So that is equal to 
6.8424 and I write this entropy and at the end of the bracket I include the unit which is kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. Now the next stop is S for this pressure. For 1.8 megapascal and also for the same temperature which is 350 my entropy is 7.012. 7.012 and the unit is kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. All right, now for the denominator, all I need to do is to convert the unit from megapascal to kPa. So it's gonna be 2500 kPa minus 1800 kPa. Okay, so if I do the math, my left hand side, which is partial, is partial P when the temperature is constant at 350 degrees C is going to be negative 0.000242 kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin over kPa. That is my left hand side. So once we are done with the left hand side, we want to do the right hand side. And in the right hand side, you want to keep the pressure constant and look at the change of a specific volume when the temperature is changed. So our goal for the right hand side is to focus at two megapascal. So this is the temp this is the table. And here is the two megapascal pressure that we have. So we want to focus here. We want to stay at two megapascal, but look at the change of specific volume because this column is the specific volume. We want to look at the change of a specific volume when the temperature is changed, okay? So the temperature given in the, ta in the problem is 350 degrees C. So we want to change the temperature to go below and greater than 350 degrees C and look at the change of a specific volume, okay? So the right-hand side will be negative partial V partial T when the pressure is kept constant at 2 megapascal is going to be equal to negative the two temperatures that we have in the table are 300 and 400 I mean the two temperature adjacent to 350 degrees C so let's say the high temperature minus the low temperature degree C so this is my delta T and this V here is the specific volume at 400 degrees C minus the specific volume at 300 degrees C. Okay, so I have a negative from the table, a specific volume at 400 degrees C is 0 0.15122, 0 0.15122 minus this specific volume at 300 degrees C is 0.12551 meter cube per kilogram. Okay, and once again, all of these, I mean, both of these two numbers are coming from pressure of 2 megapascal. So let me just add that here. So this is for P equal to 2 megapascal. Okay, and also these two numbers are at 2 megapascal okay so if you do the math you will have 0.15122 minus 0.12551 divided by 100 so that will give you negative partial v partial t then pressure is equal to 2 megapascal is equal to negative 0 0.0002571 and the unit is meter cube per kilogram degree C. Okay, now we want to compare this number. Let me just make a box around that. We want to compare this number to this number. Okay, so we are comparing these two numbers to each other. 
So both of them are negative. The units look different, but in fact, the units are exactly the same. If you expand the units, you will see they are the same. And the difference between them, you can easily find the difference. And the difference is this value minus this value divided by this value multiplied by 100%. So the delta in answers, let's say, by saying delta answers, I mean uh, the difference between these two is because both of them have the negative sign, let me just work with the positive values. So I would say 0 0.0002571 minus 0.0002422 divided by these multiplied by 100%. And that will be 0 0.0002571 minus 242 divided by 2571 multiplied by 100%. So the difference is 5.87%. That is the difference between those two. So they are pretty in good uh, range from each other. Now the other question is, why these two units are the same. In order to show that, all I need to do is start from one side and try to get into the other side. To do that, I will start from this and then see if I can end up with this. But just keep in mind that unit-wise, here I have per Kelvin and here I have per degree C, but both of them are the same because each one degree C change of temperature is equal to one Kelvin change of temperature. So let me start from this unit and see if I end up with that. My goal is to show that these two units are in fact the same. So kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin multiplied by KPA. This is the unit that I have on the left hand side. So I put them in a bracket because we are discussing about units. So this unit is the same as that. Instead of joule, I would say newton meter because we know that joule is the unit of work and work is equal to force multiplied by displacement. And I still keep the K because that is 1000 newton. And in the denominator, I have kilogram, Kelvin multiplied by K. Oh, instead of KPA, again, I will, I will do kilonewton uh, per meter squared. Okay, so basically this is my kJ or kilojoule and this is my kPa that I had before, kPa. Okay, if you notice, I have kilonewton in the denominator and a kilonewton in the denominator. So I can cancel these two and I will end up with meter cube. Like I have one meter here and I have meter squared here. So that gives me meter cube per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so this is what I have in fact here. And that's a unit. Now, if you look at this unit, this is also meter cube per kilogram Kelvin because although there is degree C, but one degree C change in temperature is equal to one Kelvin change in temperature. So this is in fact... Uh, this is also the same as meter cube per kilogram Kelvin. So these two units are in fact exactly the same. So that means not only value-wise, the two sides are the same, but also unit-wise, they are the same. 